Hey everybody, today I'm counting down my top 10 tile placement games. Now I really enjoy this genre of games, there really is a lot out there and there's just something very satisfying about you know taking tiles and building up something in front of you um, to do the best you can with those tiles. Um, I've made a list of 10 games here that I really enjoy, um, I'm very happy with the list and I've got some real big hitters um, in terms of board game designers on this list. So let's get started at number 10. So at number 10, I have uh, the obvious one, Carcassonne. Um, I'm not gonna kind of um, teach you how to suck lemons with this one. If you're watching this channel, you're gonna know what Carcassonne is, but there's just something very clean and very pure about it um, that anybody can play as you are basically building this medieval kingdom and placing your workers on these buildings to try and claim them when you finish the buildings and get points. Same applies to roads and then same applies to fields. And what I do like about this game is um, how you can kind of tailor it to your needs and you know up the complexity with all the different expansion modules and so on. Um, the reason I put it on this list is not, not only because I do still enjoy it. This is one of the first games that got me into the hobby, as it is with a lot of people. But because you can play this with anybody, um in terms of the rest of the games on this list, I'm pretty sure my girlfriend wouldn't play the rest of them, but she really enjoys Carcassonne. So for that reason alone, it's on my top 10. So at number 10, Carcassonne. At number nine, I have Riverboat by Michael Kiesling. Um, now this is a game that flew relatively under the radar a couple of years ago, um, as you are picking up these different um, kind of vegetables and planting them in your fields, trying to uh, make patterns by um, formulating continu continuous rows with those crops. And same applies with these um, huts, and you're trying to get uh, kind of them to circle around the huts and all in all to get order to get points. Um, but it's a really nice game. Um, the tile placement is quite thinky because the way you draw the tiles is um, is based on how you place your workers in the previous round, as you almost have this kind of draw a tile, um, a card off the top of the pile, and place your worker down. And then in the next round, depending on where all your workers are placed, you can put um, these different crop tiles um, according to those positions. Um, it's got kind of quite a unique feel to that game, and it's just something a bit a bit different in terms of the tile placement. So check this one out. Loads of different ways you can score and stuff based on the tile placement. So yeah, the, the, the tile placement part of it is, is quite um, a big integral part of the game and it's very enjoyable. So that's a Riverboat at number nine. Uh, at number eight, I have um, a game by the Dr. Rainer Knizia, um, one of the most prolific board game designers of all time. This is Charté. Now Charté is a strictly two player game. It's an abstract style game, a style game and it's only made up of nine tiles. So it's a micro game. And you are basically, uh, one player is going to take the role of kind of the land mass and one's going to be the sea mass. And you are going to um, basically take turns placing these tiles um, in order to get the long or the largest kind of coverage of your type of land on the board by the time the last tile is placed. Um, very simple, but can be very thinky because all you do on your turn is you can draw a tile off the top of the stack or you can rotate an existing tile 90 degrees. Um, so there's lots of thinky things to go in here, very kind of, um, you know, requires a lot of concentration and can, kind of the smallest mistakes can cost you the game, but it's quick and it takes about 10 minutes to play, ultra simple to teach. And um, another game that's flown very much under the radar, but a nice clean design and um, very enjoyable. If, and if you like your two player games, this is definitely one to check out. That is Charté. Um, at number seven, I have a game by Uwe Rosenberg. So another heavy hitter with Patchwork. Patchwork is another strictly two player game. Um, this one is a, a very nice game that uses this time track mechanism. So basically the more, or when you accumulate these different tiles, which are these different kind of, um, you know, um, cuttings of fabric that you're trying to fill in your board. Um, and all those tiles have a cost on them in terms of buttons, which is kind of your currency, but also they cost time. And the more time you spend, the further along the time track you go, and the person behind keeps taking turns until they catch up with you on that time track. So those two kind of different economies of the, um, how much you're gonna spend on your buttons, uh, how much time it's gonna cost, and also the tiles you take have buttons on them, which means when you get to certain points on the time track, you take all those buttons back into your, um, into your kitty, which means you can spend more. But you're trying to collect those tiles in order to fill up as much space as you can on the board because every empty space at the end of the game is going to cost you negative points. Um, just a wonderfully balanced game and um, I've got a lot of play out of this one. And again, very low barrier to entry and I think the appeal to this one is um, quite high in terms of non-gamers as well. So a really pleasant game, patchwork. Um, at number six, I have Karuba 
by uh, Rudiger Dorn, who is another designer I really like. Um, Karuba is a um, is a game that's very interesting as you are trying to get all these different adventurers to their matching um, kind of temples on the board. And the way you're going to do it is that every player is going to draw the identical same tile um, every every round because everybody's got the exact same setup. There's pretty much no player interaction in this game whatsoever. Um, it's pretty much an efficiency puzzle as you draw these tiles and place them anywhere on this board. Um, any tile that you kind of don't place, you can use the number of kind of road entrances to move these adventurers along to try and get them to their to their temples. And the first person to get each person to the temples gets more points than the person who does it next. Um, very clean design, very simple, um, extremely low barrier to entry again. So it's got that nice kind of family waiting and it just works really well. Um, it has a nice kind of replay replayability to it. Um, just a very nice, pleasant feeling game. Um, and um, I've always got time to play this one. Uh, I really enjoy it every single time I've played it. So that is Karuba, um, a really fantastic game. Uh, at number five, I have um, Carpe Diem by Stefan Feld, who I said, another heavy hitter. Um, this one is um, a relatively simple game in terms of a Stefan Feld game, as you are moving um, these workers around this um, well, depending on what version of the game you've got, you've either got like a rondelle or you've got a kind of a zigzaggy motion. But either way, you're going to kind of go from different zone to different zone, picking up tiles. And the reason you're picking up those tiles is to um, obviously fill in your board. And if you put, put certain buildings in certain places, you're going to get more bonus points. But also when you complete buildings, you get different kind of um, rewards, such as different resources or bonuses and stuff like that. And um, the thing I really like about this game is not only the kind of the, the tension of getting to the tiles you really want, but the scoring mechanism in the game is fantastic. When basically when everybody's collected their tiles for the round, you're going to take one of your tokens and put it on um, a spot on the board based on all these different scoring criteria made up of cards. And you're gonna score two different cards depending on where you've placed that token. And once someone's placed that token there, nobody else can. So th that exact combination of those two cards cannot be scored again. I absolutely love that mechanism. And there's also this kind of initiative mechanism as well when you get to a certain point or place certain tiles on the board, you can go faster along the time track, meaning you're going to get first dibs on those scoring criteria. Um, the, tile, the tile placement is very strong in it, and ultimately I love that scoring mechanism. So uh, a really nice game, and it plays in about 40 minutes or so as well. So uh, a rock solid game by Stefan Feld, that is Carpe Diem. Um, at number four, I have my second Stefan Feld game with the Castles of Burgundy. Uh, this is his most prolific game um, as you're kind of rolling dice and then using the number of those dice to take tiles onto your board and then ultimately to order to place them onto your board, onto your province to um, kind of make different synergies and stuff and all the buildings have different um, abilities that you can take and place mines down to get more uh, ore which can let you buy more tiles. Um, you've got the different pens of animals you're trying to fill in, which can get accumulative bonuses. And um, so I just love all the different mechanisms and all the different scoring and different uh, abilities all the different tiles give you. You're gonna get points for filling in certain regions um, and the quicker you do them, the better. Uh, very well balanced game. It's a complete point salad game where whatever you do, you're gonna get points. But it's all about placing those tiles at the right time, at the right place to get those different combinations and to get as many points as possible. Um, really great game and again, if you watching this channel you're going to know all about it it's just brilliant that is castles of burgundy by stefan feld uh, at number three i have a game by alexander fister who is another huge board game designer this is isle of sky now i haven't played Isle of sky as much as i'd like but what i have played of it i absolutely adore um, it's so well designed and there are kind of two elements about it that I really, really like. Um, if you look at this at, um, at kind of a, you know, passing kind of view, then it, it looks like Carcassonne, but it doesn't play much like Carcassonne at all. Um, so you are basically going to take tiles in order to score a number of different things. Um, and as I said, there's two different things I like about it is the fact that there's so many different scoring criteria in the game. I think there's 16 different tiles and every game you only use a combination of four of those tiles. And... Um, some might say, I'll have a certain amount of sheep on your board or have a certain type of amount of boats, stuff like that. And, um, but the cool thing is, on your kind of round board, only certain criteria score in certain rounds and all the different combinations um, score at different, at different times. 
but the cool thing is that you can really kind of ignore one scoring criteria and focus on scoring loads of points later um, based on the you know on when those things are going to trigger um, but the second thing I really liked about the game is the the way that you, you actually take the tiles because every round you're going to draw three tiles and you're going to basically secretly bin one off and then you're going to put, assign prices to the other two based on the money and money is a very tight resource in the game but the cool thing about it is once you reveal them um, people the other players get a chance to bid on the towers that you've you've put the prices on and obviously the, if they bid you get the money and then they take it but if not then you have to pay the money that you've assigned to those tiles a very cool mechanism where you can kind of um, you know set the prices and how much you value them because as i said you, you're kind of calling their bluff saying like if you're not willing to pay that then i am uh, very very nice uh, very clean design plays in a great amount of time as well and just another rock solid game by alexander fister with a ton of replayability a ton of uh, variability and um, it's just i just a brilliantly balanced design that is Isle of Sky uh, at number two I have the castles of Mad King Ludwig by Bezier Games and by designer Ted Olspark uh, this game probably is the coolest theme on the list where you are taking all these different rooms to build a very um, kind of eccentric um, castle and um, based on the king's wishes so um, you've got all these different room types of different sizes and different shapes so not only have you got that kind of puzzle of um, you know of how you're actually going to fit things together but when you place certain rooms that you get, you get different bonuses um, you're trying to keep certain rooms away from other certain rooms such as keeping your allowed rooms away from your sleeping quarters because you're going to score negative points if you put them together but alternatively if you put certain rooms together you're going to get bonus points as well and um, also the king is going to have different wants that he wants so he might have he might really desire a certain amount of round rooms or a certain amount of large rooms and at the end of the game depending on who's got the most you're going to score points um, just a really really cool design um, and a bit like Isle of Sky as well it has this great method of accumulating tiles where um, every round someone's going to be the master builder and they're going to set the prices of all these different rooms and then all the other players are going to kind of choose to pay those prices and pay it to the master builder or choose to basically pass and take money um, but obviously when it gets around to the master builder's turn to take a towel they have also have to pay the prices that they've set themselves so they want to set the prices um, high enough so that other people won't buy the tiles they want but obviously not to um, bankrupt themselves um, a fantastic game probably one of the most well received games I've got in my collection um, whoever I played this with has really enjoyed it and I've got a lot of mileage out of it that is the castles of Mad King Ludwig a brilliant tile placement game and uh, finally at number one I have a very recent game it's a it's a reprint in fact or a second edition this is Glen Moore 2 Chronicles by Matthias Kramer um, who is one of my favorite designers uh, this game is absolutely amazing um, the game comes with a ton of different um, tiles and loads of different modules and stuff you can play in. Um, the way you accumulate the tiles is that you are going around this time track and you can go as far as you want and get the tile you want. But then every person behind you will kind of keep taking turns to catch up with you. Uh, a bit like Patchwork, or in fact very similar to Patchwork. But the tension is a lot stronger in this one. Um, uh, the, the different things you, you do when you place your tiles is extremely interesting because you activate every single tile um, around it and uh, that can get you loads of resources and you can convert resources into other goods. Um, certain tiles give you um, abilities to um, like get, give you instant rewards or some of them might you might take certain um, people and stuff and they'll get you kind of uh, new technologies and new abilities that nobody else has. Um, you want to try there's also this very cool mechanism as well where how, depending on how many tiles you have at the end of the game the person with the most is going to score negative points in comparison to the person with the least tiles so you're actually rewarded for having a very kind of um, streamlined small kind of surface area as compared to just buying everything you want and just placing it down where obviously you might get a lot of points that way but you're going to suf suffer negative points depending on how big it is compared to the next player um, just a, a brilliant game one of the, one of the finest games in my collection to be honest um, I absolutely love it um, probably in my top 10 of all time at this point um, it's just brilliant the the different strategies you can take is great I said that just taking those different kind of um, you know Scotsmen which give you these different technologies are great loads of different strategies to try and it's just brilliant so honestly this game is up there with the best try it out um, it comes with the Chronicles um, in the in the box as well which kind of just tailor the or 
alter the gameplay just a bit to give you a bit of variability and you can plug all the different modules in and get very different games. But yeah, in terms of tile placement games, this is definitely the best one I've played and um, I couldn't recommend it enough. So uh, that concludes my top 10 tile placement games of all time. Um, I hope there's something on here that's piqued your interest and definitely go check them out because again, highly, highly recommended. Um, just excellent games on this list. So um, if you have enjoyed this review or this top 10 list, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. Uh, additionally, you can support me on Patreon and um, follow me on Instagram. I'll put the links below. Um, for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.